Good morning, traders. This is Bruce at VeloxPro. Can you hear me and see my screen? Let me know and we'll get started. Sean, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Okay, I don't know if I'm actually broadcasting here. Um, hmm. Okay, no, no. Okay, all right. Thanks, guys. Okay, excellent. All right, we're all set. Um, okay, well, uh, today we have, uh, we're continuing on with our professional um, trader webinar series, and today we have John Slazas. I'll get into the introduction in just a moment. Uh, first, I want to read the risk disclaimer. Trading futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. And I also want to show uh, we're still, we are continuing on with our promotion here. Uh, we have a 33% discount on Bookmap, and it's for the advanced version only, and it's a, for the yearly or the quarterly. So you can now uh, purchase Bookmap uh, for, uh, for a discount uh, for the first three months. Uh, you will get a discount, and then um, for, the, for the quarterly, uh, and then uh, for the first year, uh, you'll get the discount here. A 33% discount on the uh, advanced version uh, for the yearly version. All right. Okay. And uh, these webinars are all recorded. Uh, you can go to the YouTube channel, uh, or you can also click here on under the uh, portal, become a member here uh, under this education tab, and you will see all the recorded webinars are under this link right here. Bookmap recorded webinars. Okay, and uh, well, let's get into it. Um, so uh, John uh, is Chicago native, as it says here, uh, grew up on the floor uh, of the CME uh, and uh, has been trading for, for quite a while now, uh, over 30 years of experience uh, and um, uh, trading alongside uh, a lot of the uh, most influential traders and leaders uh, in the marketplace. Uh, and uh, he's a CTA. Uh, he started his research firm, uh, JS Services, uh, in 1984, uh, and uh, he looks at uh, he's specializing in um, uh, professional trading tools uh, and uh, uh, analytics. So let me also show uh, his website, and I'll put this into the chat for you, and his email uh, and Twitter as well. So uh, the um, website is here. Uh, it's uh, jsservices.trade. I'll throw that in the chat. And um, let's see, you have his email in there already, but let me throw it in again here. Okay. And uh, we can put the, uh, the Twitter handle as well. Okay, there you go. All right, without further ado then, uh, John, uh, uh, glad to have you back. Uh, let me turn it right over to you. Thanks, Bruce. Hello, everyone. Let's see here. Let me just get my screen set up. And John, do you want me to um, uh, ask questions uh, as they come in, or uh, do you want to hold until later? You know, if, uh, if questions are on topic, um, definitely what I'm going to do is, um, can you see my screen now? Yes. The uh, PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, what I'm going to do initially is just go over um, kind of the basis of, of what I do uh, and how I look at the market and then um, go over the specific um, order book uh, dynamics that I look for and then, uh, and then you know, get into some, um, some examples. So, you know, anything that's on topic, you know, you definitely uh, you can um, – interject I don't have a problem with that okay and I'll, and I'll take us I'll take a pause um, at the end and if we've got time we can go look at uh, some live markets you know there's some stuff going on in crude oil right now we could take a look at that okay sounds great all right great um, yeah as, as Bruce mentioned you know I've been in the business a while you know I've um, you know had a uh, JS services as a, uh, a resource for traders and you know even when I was on the floor uh, and things were done more by hand, which now everything's done by a machine. Um, you know, the goal was always the same, to provide a trader with some objective truth. 
you know, give you know more. Everything need you know need giving traders facts. You know, you don't need traders don't need opinions uh, or you know to skew their bias. What they need is some truth so they can make good, informed, intuitive decisions. And that's that's really what uh, we I strive for in everything I do. And I really enjoy working with Bookmap because they do the same thing as you know JS Services. Um, you know, really provides the you know the macro strategy foundation. You know, using quantitative analytics. You know, Bookmap shows this. You know, the historical uh, view of the micro dynamics in the order book, and you know, and these are real time facts. So you have this you know this long term basis or this you know macro strategy foundation. And that's that provides you know really the context for the session. You know when you get trade signals in the moment, you know what do they really mean beyond what the moment is, and you need some context. And that's that's really what JS Services does is we provide that macro strategy foundation, and then from that foundation, you know going into you know what's happening at the moment, real time uh, with the real time facts of the moment, and you know when I go over what I do and I show you these analytics, you know what they're you know what they provide for you is a basis to really standardize your trading and, and make your trading more systematic because you have you know if you understand the context you know then you have a benchmark to start to um, you know, really optimize your trading uh, because you you know you know these these conditions and you know how these conditions work and you can you know really optimize your you know all your signals in line with the context of the state and you know, JS Services Analytics, you know, really, you know, provide that foundation by identifying the the what the market state is, what the structure of that state is, and then what are the inherent strategy themes of that state and structure. So, you know, what is market state? You know, it's you know basically, you know, most people look at state as either trending or non-trending, but there's there's more nuances than that. You know, sometimes a trend is accelerating, sometimes it's digesting, um, sometimes it's correcting, and so JS Services identifies that state condition, and so you have this expectation. And so it's you know literally when you know when you go outside for the day, you, you take a look at what's the weather going to be like. You know this is kind of this is the basis for the day that all trading is going to that you know happen on. So understanding what that foundation is is key. And, you know, and markets don't always you know you know uh, you know they're always in transition from one market state to the next, and and that's when and things change and when things change they change at structure points and so every market state has structure you know you know we call that market structure and so you know if you are uh, in a bull trend you know you there's a price point that tells us that this bull trend is no longer true and the definition of a bull trend is market makes higher move highs higher move lows if it stops doing that it's no longer a bull trend; it's in transition. So that's that's a tell that this market that was in a positive trending situation is now in a transitional situation, and you need to change your tactics. You know, and 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 that's what these structure points do, and and that's what we have integrated with Bookmap. Uh, our structure. So our structure is in what we call the JS Notes column, and you know it it pops up right on the uh, on the heat map. But it, but it, and it gives you context to these dynamic order book events that are happening. You have more clarity. And another thing that's you know interesting about you know the this analysis is you know we're kind of building a picture. So we have this state foundation, and then we identify the structure of that foundation. So now we know you know where you know if the market holds structure, then we anticipate that this this state will persist. And if the market breaks structure, uh, you know that tells us that things are going to transition. So if we're in this state and then we're in this structure, you know then there's certain inherent strategy themes that are that are prevalent that we should anticipate to dominate trading. You know, if you're in a bull trend, then and you have you know this specific structure. Well, you know, what's the optimal thing to do? Well, buy breaks off the lower trough. You know, buy breaks off that point that's going to change that trend. That's going to be the optimal, you know, kind of strategy theme. And then if the market breaks structure, you know, there's going to be some um, some themes as well. We call those hedge themes. And so as a trader, you're always looking at, you know, okay, what's the state? What's the structure of that state? 
and you know, and what are the optimal and hedge strategy themes, and then looking at you know real time price action to identify you know what what theme is is happening, what is the condition, and so we wrap it all up in what we call our playbook, you know, providing you these this this macro structure foundation, and so you know, you, you have this this context behind you know what's happening at the moment. And here's an example of a market's in a bull trend. We call, uh, you know, we, we identify and define a, a market state with really three price points. Uh, one range, that UP stands for upside pivot, DP downside pivot, so that's what we call our critical range. And then we have a, what we have our R level, which is a sentiment bias. So it's literally an over under number for the period. And with this state and structure, we've got the market sentiment is balanced in the middle, and it and it identifies that structure point that says as long as long as the the uh, crude oil is trading above 53.71, uh, this bull trend is engaged. If not, then uh, the bull trend is going to be broken, and we shouldn't anticipate this market to perform like a bull trend. And so, once we've identified this this strategy theme. You know, then we want to take a look and see what's happening at the moment. So we have we have this awareness, we have this foundation contextual awareness of what's going on in the back backdrop, and we know that this market is in a positive trend, and we know that this if this trend is going to continue, then this market's going to maintain a trade above fit the R level or this 53.71 area, and we can see that here in the uh, on the heat map. You know, really, you know, and this is the strategy that we're looking at right now. What's called a buy our breakout, where the market starts out below this sentiment bias level, breaks out above it, and gives us a buy signal. And that's what's happening in this example. The market was trading lower, traded up through it, and now we're we're above it. And so the market is telling us we're in this theme. And so now we want to optimize. Our trading, you know, so we want to make our, you know, our our tactics as perfect as possible. And one thing I want to mention uh, before I go into the example is, you know, part of what the analytics offer is some risk parameters, and those are displayed on the heat map as well. And we have two uh, key metrics uh, that we use. One is called a variance, and this is really uh, the zone that should be considered at the level. You know, so it's it's a, uh, you know, that's kind of the optimal entry area anywhere within that zone. And then the alert distance. And this, this is, that's really the signal acceptance zone surrounding a, a price map level. And so anywhere within that zone, uh, we're going to look for uh, events to, um, to trade. And then outside that zone, we're going to avoid entering the market because the real liquidity is going to come at these structure points. And so how do we use the, you know, how do we optimize our trading tactics by incorporating these micro dynamics of the order book to make them more effective? And you know, these are some of the things that I like to look for that help give me clarity at, in the moment of you know what's what's happening. Helps with timing, um, you know, position adjustment, stop placement. You know, so I'm I'm looking for liquidity shifts. I'm looking at resting paper. I'm looking at order imbalances. Uh, intensity of trade and large lot orders, and so liquidity shifts, you know, really improve timing by identifying that conditions in the order book are changing. And so, in our example here, you know, we we know that we're in this uh, bull trend market state. We know that the market is at a structure point, and we know that the market is in a buy our breakout strategy theme. Do we want to participate in this opportunity? And so we're just looking for tells that tell us, you know, is it time for this thing to go? And I like looking for liquidity shifts and in, in during breakouts. And so, you know, you have a market, you know, the market's trading here, it's kind of dark under here, and and then <clears throat> then all of a sudden it starts to light up, and it starts to light up at a market structure point. So this is at the top of the alert distance. You know, this is the, the very edge of where I I want to participate in this breakout, but it, the order book is telling me that that's where the buyers are. And the market already 
came back and tested kind of the variance area, and now I'm getting this liquidity shift, and this is kind of a, a tell that the market might be ready to go. When you see the order books start to shift up and, and liquidity shift like that, and you know it's important to understand the you know you, we're, I'm always looking for confluence. So I know this is my entry acceptance zone that I can buy. I'm allowed to you know kind of participate and buy this market, and I also like to look at price structure and how is price structure aligning. And I can see it. You know I've got mark. You know, price structure here is aligning with market structure variance here, and I see it's aligning here, and now I'm getting a liquidity shift. And so, you know, I have real good clarity now of okay, this market is breaking out, it's pulled back, and it's and it's getting ready to uh, to ramp up. You know, the other the other you know another major thing is the resting paper. You know, and you know one thing about you know the world we live in now with electronic trading is you know all resting paper it can be fleeting. You know, you know, but there are tells, you know, like the length of time that it persists at a level that can impact its reliability, you know, that's really that paper is going to be there. And along with, you know, when this paper aligns with the price and market structure. And so in our example here, <clears throat> I know that this 5371 level, this sentiment bias R level, this is really where the buying energy is. And what I like about the order, you know, he, uh, the book map is that I'm able to see that there's resting paper below the market. So you can't see the alert distance below here, but it's it's just under the variance of this R level. So it gives me some clarity about it. where the you know where's the big support. Well, we've had this resting paper here for a long time, and it's it's coming into alignment at this variance. And so you know, and, and then. For targets and for position management, what's going on, on the upside? Well, I've got some resting paper, uh, you know, at the you know just above the um, the variance of this what we call a validation level. This is kind of this is a minor level and this is a major level, and the um, major levels are going to have an alert uh, alert distance and a variance, and the minor levels are just going to have the variance. But you know, and these are more uh, levels to use for position management, but. And that's something that's for another another webinar to get into those details. But I just want to you know focus on the uh, order book events at the moment. And you know so here's another example of a uh, you know resting paper with some liquidity shift. And so we have a market. Uh, you know this is the downside pivot, the bottom of our critical range. And you know as the market's uh, approaching this level, we see that you know the order book starts to build up, and we get and we get this resting paper here. You know, and whenever it, it, you you start to see it, you know, kind of build a you know a wall here. Um, you know, it, it gives you confidence, and especially when that is happening at market structure, you know, at a price map level. Um, you know, you know, is this break going to stabilize? Maybe okay. Now all of a sudden you know, it's here. You're seeing a lot of the order book build up. And then, and then the market makes a move, trades back above this minor validation level, and then all of a sudden we get a liquidity shift. And so this is, you know, this, and that's what you're looking for. You know, is this market really going to stabilize? We're going to have a transition back higher. Well, we have the order book supporting us below the market off structure, and now we're getting a liquidity shift. You know, part of the resting paper is uh, is to really identify you know what makes up that level, and if and large lots can skew the order book, uh, and this would be fleeting liquidity. You know, so it's it's always good to recognize, you know, you if you have you know this liquidity here above the market, and you're saying, okay, well, I'm using that as a target. I'm probably going to get a rejection there. But then when you notice that it's a there's a, you know the, on the um, Book map, it you know, with the uh, white hashes, it identifies you know a large lot. So we know that you know half of this uh, size at this level is actually one trader. And so, if the market approaches that level, that that trader might leave. It could be fleeting. And so, it's always good to really recognize you know what you know what's happening there. Just as you know, on the downside, we do have some large lots here, but we'd also have some thick bars. You know, and so this is this is good liquidity, and it's just telling us, yeah, the, you know, real support is below the market, and we know that, um, you know, that's our our major uh, inflection point that we're looking at. And here's another example of a large lot where it really just skews it. You know, so if you're looking at this, and and 
you're giving this some credence, you have to understand that, hey, this, this trader could immediately leave and, and that could be fleeting size. So it's always good to uh, take a look at what's, you know, what's happening, what's that size made up of. Uh, you know, another good tool uh, that comes up that provides opportunity is order imbalance. And especially when it's aligned with the, you know, the price map framework, you know, it identifies and confirms opportunities, so trading tactics can be applied to capture these dynamic occurrences. Uh, in this example, we have a small order imbalance, um, but you, you can see it gets all dark. And so we have this liquidity shift, and we know we're a buyer here, and we know we're looking for this market to move uh, much higher. And we have this dark space here, so that, that you know, gives us more confidence that Yes, if this market does go on the bid, uh, it's just it should just rip through that area, and so I, I'm you know always looking for those those types of situations. And so here, you know we have, you know you know how would we construct a trade here with the you know the structure? You know one thing about the having this macro strategy is you have trade vision. You know where can this this uh, trade go to? You know, you're not caught up in the in too much of the micro. Uh, you're using the micro to optimize your entry and to optimize your your order placement. You know we, we know we want to you know buy you know where can we buy this market? Well, we, you know we can only buy it at the very edge of this um, signal acceptance zones, and we have resting and we have some paper coming in here. This liquidity shift, so we're going to put an order you know right on top of that, and then we have some additional resting paper coming in around the variance, which is in line with our metric and also in line with price structure. So I always like to look for price structure, the order book, and market structure alignment. And then on the stop placement, we you know we can put our stop, you know, here's we have our variance. Uh, so putting one stop below the variance and their stop below the alert distance to the downside and then using the you know kind of resting paper, uh, you know, putting it below that paper there. Here's a good example of imbalance that happens, which is kind of nice, and you'll see this in the order book, where all of a sudden you get these big dark areas. And so here, this upside pivot, that's the top of our critical range area. That res that's our big resistance point. And you can see that you know the order book's been stacked up there for some time. And then you have this dark area here, and, and the resting paper's below the market at the midpoint of the critical range, what we call our directional. And so, you know, if if you have a strategy, you know if the if the macro strategy foundation is telling you, hey, you know this is a sell opportunity in this zone, uh, it's kind of nice because you you have you know the border books just showing you your target. And a lot of times when this happens, these moves can be quick as they move through those areas uh, of imbalance. Intensity of trade is is a is a good confirmation event for both you know fade and reversal momentum shifts as well as momentum breakout trades. And this can improve the timing and optimize uh, your tactics with that. And so, you know, here is a uh, an example of a fade uh, where you know we had a market that you know kind of exhausted at the top of this uh, validation number, and then it comes down into our our big support. And you can see the you know market had some paper here. You get some liquidity shifts. It's going away as the market comes down here. It comes back. They fill it, and immediately this resting this this liquidity fills back in, and it's filling back in at a major structure point, and then we get an an, an event. We get this intensity of trade event, you know. But when you have this context behind, you know what's going on in the backdrop, and we know this is our big support level, uh, it gives us a lot of clarity. And then also um, one thing that the uh, Analytics do as well as they they identify the price segment moves that the market's trading in, you know, which we call an average price map distance, which is you know one major level to the next major level basically. So we have this clarity that if the market does stabilize around this area, uh, where can it go? It can at least come up to this area. And then when you and then when you see and then when the market's coming in here and giving this event, you know we can see this liquidity coming in here and it's, and it's staying there, and it's coming in at that lo that lower alert distance off this structure point. Now here's another intensity of trade event of, of a kind of a turn in momentum. So you have this market, you know, pressing it to the downside, and then it breaks structure. You know, when I'm talking about price structure, so lower move lows, lower move highs. All of a sudden, the market, you know, is starting to break structure, and it's doing it with some intensity. 
and then that intense and then as the market continues to break structure you're getting more and what's interesting um, here is you can also see this liquidity shift so this is another tell that you know this is real so you're getting this this event and then all of a sudden the order these orders are backing off they're all look at there they just all pull and they all they all started pulling here and so this is this is a little bit of a tell and then you know, if we're getting this order event at what we call our downside target one where can it go and go up to the downside pivot and it gives you that, that clarity of what can happen here's an example of intensity of trade for a potential reversal signal so you you have we've identified this big resistance area our upside pivot top of the critical range and we get this intensity of trade coming into that level we are also you can see we had this resting paper here for a while and it's just it's staying there and it actually you know as the market comes in here it even starts to build up uh, above the market and you have this intensity of trade in it it backs off and then you're coming into a retest into this zone, but there's less intensity of trade. You know, this you'll see this happen uh, on reversals. And again, you know, you're you're looking for these types of events at structure. So if we're getting those events at a different spot, it's not as interesting as if you're getting it at a structure point. So the key with you know optimizing your trading tactics, you know, is observing the price action within the market structure, in the context of the market state and the underlying strategy themes. You know, and this is going to give you clarity and a competitive edge to anticipate opportunity, you know, using those the market metrics thresholds, you know, during dynamic order book events. So you have that complete clarity of, you know, what is price action doing within the macro structure and then using the microstructure to you know really optimize your trading and our our desktop application helps you to normalize you know this macro structure into your workflow um, what you're looking at here is a, uh, a tile grid and when you click on a tile it's going to change the market state and so you can uh, you can find market states that are that you like to trade you know, instead of just, oh, you know, I'm always just focused on trading this one market, well, you can come in and uh, identify market state conditions and, 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 and strategy, market structure bias and strategies that you like to trade, and then gravitate towards those types of markets. So I, I, can, um, I can go through another example here. Um, or we can go just I can take some questions and then we can go you know do a live example or I can do this one canned one that I have um, one yeah once you keep keep going through and then um, uh, get um, uh, people can start to put in their their questions um, uh, as as you're going through it as well all right I'm gonna go through um, another example and then we'll, I'll flip to uh, live market and so, you know, here we have a uh, uh, a buy our fade strategy. We're going to fade moment. We, you know, we're looking for the market to. We're in a bull trend situation. We're looking for the market to stabilize off the R level, and we want to execute a uh, fade momentum into that level. And so, here we have the market is is broken down to this support. It's pretty, you know, pretty aggressive. You know, it's a little bit of catching a falling knife, but we we have some clarity because we've got we know this is the lower low point if this bull trend is going to stabilize it's going to do it here and so as the market's coming down you know right now we don't have a lot of liquidity and then all of a sudden we start to get a liquidity shift and we're getting a liquidity shift at structure and then then all of a sudden that liquidity shift starts to turn into some resting paper and we're getting that resting paper starting to build up here and so this is giving us some confidence that you know if you know any dips into this area we've got this support and we know what you know structurally you know we know where we're at you know on the bigger picture you know instead of just being running through the trees you know we we've got the helicopter view over the forest as well so we can you know really see clearly what's happening here and then we're using the uh, dynamic order book events to really optimize this. And then here we get a uh, intensity of trade. And so you know we're looking for these events, and we we get this intensity of trade, and we get it as the market clears this threshold. So this is a positive signal. 
Now structurally this is interesting because we have a, a, the sentiment is below the critical range. This downside pivot is, is going to be a good validation point. The market really needs to clear um, its alert distance on the upside here to really validate that yes, this market is, is, is faded into momentum and the, and the bull trend is going to uh, resume. And so And then here we get a, you know, so we have this liquidity resting here, and one of the tells is going to be that a liquidity shift up. You know, so when this liquidity starts to shift up, that's going to, that's a tell that tells us that, hey, these buyers are more aggressive. Uh, and we're, we're looking at potentially now a reversal signal, another strategy is off the uh, downside pivot. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have a few questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, Francisco is asking, would you please explain yesterday's Dow correction? I don't know if you have the Dow or if you want to jump into uh, uh, live markets yet, John. Yeah, I'll go. I could go into a live market. I don't have. I have. I don't have the um, uh, the bookmap data to to go into that. Um, but we can take a look at. Um, you know, some live markets now if you want or to. S&P is fine as well. That's what uh, Francisco is asking. Um, or whatever whatever you have up, I, I, I would imagine. Um, maybe just point out some, some of the things you're looking for. Sure. Let's take a look at... Um, I was having some problems with my S&P earlier. Let me, um, let me pull up the crude oil here. But the stock market did definitely broke structure, so the market um, uh, you had a break in structure. So it, it, you, what we're in is a transition right now, and let's see what the market state is for that. Yeah. So so what happened? Um, this is the desktop application. I'm going to pull up yesterday's information. So yesterday, actually, the um, S&P was in a uh, bull trend correction, so we had already our systems had already shifted in, you know, the, or the market had already shifted into more of a corrective posture, and then it, you know yesterday it rolled over, and today we came in and we are in a uh, more of a neutral digestion. So you know the market's just kind of making a decision right now you know, what it wants to do on the equity side. And let's take a look at um, crude oil as a kind of a live example right now. I've got that loaded up on, on the book map. We'll take a look at that. So we got crude oil is in a bear trend market state. And sentiment is above the market at 49.33. So this, this identifies the, the kind of the high point of really where the selling energy is. It's, it's way above the market. And you know our, our optimal strategy themes are to fade momentum into that peak. And on a hedge strategy, if this if this bear trend is going to continue to make lower lows, lower highs, <clears throat> if we get a failure from 47, 47, uh, we should see a new extension lower. And otherwise, if we uh, if the market can't hold that negative structure, we may get uh, a break in structure that would shift us into a hedge strategy theme and generate a buy DP reversal, which is what is going on right now in crude oil. Pull up a chart here too. So we, you know, we're we're looking at this theme here. The market, you know, downside pivot. Pull this over here. So this is the. 4747 level, it's our downside pivot, and we've had this event. So the market is broken structure. So we're getting, you know, it's, it's just always, again, you're, we're monitoring price action within market structure in the context of the state to determine what theme we're in, and the market's telling us we're in this hedge theme. We've broken the bear trend structure. You know, the, the seller, there's still going to be sellers way above the market, but we might get a play for that area. That's what it, we're, we're seeing right now. 
So here's that R level way above the market. We had this negative bear trend working. We're watching monitoring price action within market structure. Lower move lows, lower move highs. We have a, an, a, an event here, and now we're starting to break structure. This 47.89 is a validation point. So to confirm this reversal, the market will need to go above that level. And so we can look at the order book to see what's happened. We had this you know, big event. Let me see where my dots are at here. Let me just change this. I look at the market a little longer term. I'm more interested in, uh, you know, kind of bigger, bigger moves. There's no real magic number on your volume settings. It really comes down to, uh, you know, what you like to look for. But we had, you know, this is a um, a good number for us. We call this a um, critical range. Ex Ex negative extreme, this 4709 area, and that's a, a kind of a validation point for the breakout. So it's always, you know, is this market going to break out? Well, it's going to need to take out 4709, and it, you know, we get our reversal here off of that area. And as soon as we, the market, ha you know, does that, all of a sudden liquidity builds up at that point. You know, this is the confirmation point. So if the bear trend is, if crude oil is going to head lower, it needs to go below 4709, and the order book supporting that. So I'm always looking for clarity of okay, what you know, what's the order book telling me uh, in real time? And so we've had we have this resting here, and I know that's my my validation point. You know, what else do I know? Well, here the market came up, and you know, you know, came to the very top of this uh, my alert distance and broke structure, and so that, that told me that okay, this negative aggressive negative momentum is done. So we're either going to go sideways or we might get a positive reversal. And so now I'm looking at the order book and I can see, you know, here here we have one of those liquidity shifts. And that's and we already had the positive event and up and you know and and now and now the, and then the market gives us this uh, play into this area here and let's get a little more micro now. And so this um 4789 area is a uh, is going to you know confirm this this reversal strategy. So this buy DP reversal here. Let me uh, just pull something up real quick. So we have this structure, and this this minor this CR minus is going to be the the point where the market has to really violate to say, okay, we've reversed off the DP, and now we're going to kind of transition through this critical range to our upside pivot area. And so we can see that the order book is is taking a stand at that level, and it's and it's kind of all built up here at 47.97. So that's our really our confirmation point to the upside in crude oil, and if this market's good. Anytime the market reverses, there you know, it, it's typically pretty clear where the market will start to build. You know, higher move lows, higher move highs. So if we're taking, we kind of take the today's session low, and if this market's good, one, we know it needs to validate above 47.97 to be true. Otherwise, we're going to look for this market to, as long as it's holding these higher lows and building positive price structure, uh, the market's in that that hedge theme event, and if we validate above this level, that would give us confirmation that we're going to, the market's going to want to try to make a play for this 49.33 area. And so we can see that the order book did shift up here, and it shifted up with, you know, within our metrics. So we have our variance and our alert distance. Okay, so let me get to a few of the questions here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carl is asking uh, if we break uh, 4709, uh, are we lower or do we need to break 4701 uh, to really break uh, to really break it, uh, or or do you just short it? So, so that's a good question. What I'm sorry, Carl. Yes. So. 
what we're doing is we're, we're trying to, you know, the first thing we want to do is set what's the context that the market's in, right? And we want to understand, you know, um, you know, to get, you know, give us clarity, do we want to sell this thing? Well, first, just based off the structure alone, you know that you, you really are interested in selling it here, 40, 49.33. That's your, that's your sell strategy. You know, sell our, you know, sell our fade. That's the optimal. That's the optimal strategy. To, if you're a seller, that's your optimal thing to do. The next thing to do is, if the market can't make it all the way up there, and then, it, but trades above 48.96, but then fails, that would be a sell UP reversal, and that's another good strategy. So all the real, in, all the interesting sell opportunities in crude oil are higher. Okay. The reason there's no sell opportunity down here is because of the structure. And this structure tells us that the selling energy is up here. So these cells below the downside pivot, even though it's a negative signal, are not as valuable. So th this is also a size management tool. You don't want to you know, sell big below here because it's not that interesting. The real selling opportunities are higher. What, what's interesting at this level is potentially a buy. And, and we're looking and looking for this reversal, which we've had. So we, we're in this hedge theme. If the market does trade lower and goes below 47.09, it's more likely a, a head fake. Because what happens is the market's either going to hold structure and, and perform optimally, it's going to break structure and transition. And if this strategy doesn't follow through, and both of these are not true, then that that's when you see those like linear sideways non-event days. So it's either optimal theme, it's a hedge theme, or it's a non-event theme. And, and as a trader, you're just looking to recognize what theme is the market in. And again, all this work that I'm showing you is all quantitative, and it's all factual. There's the, that, everything that is built into this math is to define, to, 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 is used to identify what the truth is. It's not, a, it's not meant to be predictive at all. It's, just, it's meant to be clarity of what, what's happening. And, and th this structure is set for the session. And the reason it's set for the session, it's based on you know, how the markets work, which are driven by massive funds. And the massive funds care about you know, assets under management and performance metrics. And they base their performance metrics, they mark the, you know, even though their outlook is three to six months, that's their short-term outlook, they're marked to market every day. And so you know, the, what they really care about is you know, the close. Are we going to hold structure or break structure? Do I need a hedge or, do, or can I add? And so what happens is you have this, that's how this structure forms for the session. And the market either is going to hold structure and persist, the state's going to persist, or we're going to break structure and we're going to transition. And people need to make decisions when that happens. And so, and that's, and that's also when, when markets are in transition, they're more difficult. So, so here in the crude oil, no, you're not, you're not interested in, in selling. If there, if, if you, let's say if you are getting a sell signal, if you're going to sell anything, you're selling it right here. And why would you? Why would you? Why would that be an opportunity? Because we're at the validation point. It, it it's not uh, a, a very valuable opportunity. But if you've got a system that your tactics are coming in and saying I, I I'm a seller, well you could you, you're selling it here and your risk at 48.03. You know so you your your risk is very small. If they can't validate above this point, where can they go? Well we can see we've got an order imbalance here and they could drop them back down to 58. Real, the you know the we know that this is the you know the real long-term resting paper is way down here, and we also know that that's our validation point. So if they exhaust here, more likely you're going to see a break down to you could see a break back down to the lows, and then you wouldn't expect any follow-through. You'd expect kind of a the market to kind of go linear the rest of the session. You know, or with the market validates and it trades back up through here, and it gives you a, a fresh buy signal. Okay. Uh, Francisco is asking about um, uh, uh, so how how did the system uh, handle yesterday's uh, uh, action in the uh, in the in the stock indexes? Okay, I can show you the bigger structure what we did. I think I'm going to have to load. Let me pull up a um, 
something with some historical data on it for you guys. So we so yesterday we came in and the market state was bull trend correction. So you know market was you know S and P's have been in a bull trend and they all of a sudden they shifted out of a bull trend into a corrective posture. <clears throat> and so structurally, what we were looking at is 2370 uh, and a quarter. So as long as the market, you know, if the market was below 2370 and a quarter, then it's vulnerable to a break. And so you know, that was really our our key uh, turning point. Let me um, let me pull up a chart here. Just give me a second. But you know that, but that that was the kind of the line in the sand that determined is this market going to um, correct or you know is, is the rally over? And then uh, I'll show you the structure points in a second here. This thing's taking a while to load up. I've got uh, my other charts on a different machine. I don't like to use all the, up all the resources. We'll see if this thing comes up here. But you know, basic. Here we go. Oops. It's great how you have the historical um, there in your uh, your desktop. Yeah. No, it's it's a nice feature. Oops. So, so we're coming in pre-market here, and the market is not is is trading above our sentiment level, and so it's trading you know up here, and it's coming up to the top of our critical range. So you know this is our natural resistance, this is our support, and this is our you know the uh, the, the sentiment bias for the session, and so the market comes you know challenges resistance. And you know we're re rejecting off our upside pivot, and we break structure here, and then the market produces a uh, a negative signal here. So we get the negative signal, and this is kind of a classic um, breakout where the market you know takes it out and then pulls back into the zone, but won't pull back all the way to the figure. It'll just come into that alert distance variance area here. And then we get a um, some negative follow through. Here's where the um, trade vision comes into play. So we're, we have a couple different signals here. <clears throat> We've got a, a trade off the R level, and so any kind of breakout trade, we're always looking for two segments, two a APMDs, and then we're going to get another uh, downside pivot breakout here, uh, and that's going to give us a two APMD uh, target as well. And so you know this this was fast, but your lead you you. The market gave you an opportunity to enter here. Here's your you're getting confirmation and, and you're getting a, a, another sell signal by breaking uh, below here. More importantly, your before you started the session, your context was bull trend correction. So your whole foundation for the day was bull trend correction. And when the market was trading here. This is your validation point. If the market's going to, you know, if it's, you can just look at this expectation. If it's going to 
uh, fall back on its heels, where is it going to do it from? It's going to do it from the upside pivot. And if it's going to really transition and fall through, you know, and this is, you know, literally the picture and the expectation of what happened. And the market comes down and it attains our target. So you had a, um, you know, a 2 APMD move from here. And, you know, the market um, stabilizes. And now we, uh, we're coming into the end of the day. You know, typically when the market breaks out of the critical range, we get a 2 APMD move. A 3 APMD move is more of an event. And so they, they came close to that. And then here we're coming into a what happened today in the S&P. Is the market shifted from a bull trend correction into a neutral digestion? So it didn't commit to the bear trend. This indicator, this is our indicator, and it's a 10-day plot of the indicator. So we were in a, a bull trend. We shifted into a bull trend correction, and now we're, we're kind of staying in neutral, and we're kind of hugged on this area. Again, I'm always looking for clarity. This is, a, uh, we call it market color, and yellow is an extreme signal for us. And so this is, if you want to know why we're in neutral digestion, well, the market got overdone to the downside, and it generated an extreme signal here. And typically when that happens, the market needs to uh, digest a little bit, and it, that's why it shifted into neutral digestion. And so we have, you know, as the market, as the S and P's are trading, you know, they're trading off this critical range support. Uh, you know, you know, we're basically here. Is this, you know, where's the selling energy? It's above the market here at 23.62 and a half. And what's happened is the market bounced off this downside pivot, and we're here. So this is a this is a real this is uh, we'll take a look this is a key time to look at the book map because if we're getting the order book stacked up here then you know if the market's going to transition lower it's going to transition lower right now right here right now from 234675 this is the validation point that this market's stabilizing and going nowhere and we're going to you know we're just going to have a sideways digest if this negative momentum that we had yesterday, is this enough of a digest to take us off that over, you know, like a little bit ahead of itself? Absolutely. That's enough. Half a session, more than that, you know, half a session of digestion. May not it may not be enough, but that the order book will help us. Let's let me see if um I was having some issues on this machine with my S P. Let me see if it kicked back in. Yeah. I'm Still not having. Let me just put a fresh one up here. Yeah, so if the order book is supporting the market, you know, you know here that's you know if we if we're if we're dark above this area or if we have an imbalance, and I don't have a picture right now for the S and P. I'm not watching stocks uh, at the moment um, because it's neutral digestions typically is can be a, kind of a messy trade. So a lot of times I avoid those situations by not even looking at them. And, you know, but that would, that's what you're looking for right now in the S&P. You're looking for liquidity shifts. You know, is this market going to, it's kind of like make or break here. Uh, if the order book does shift up and pushes and we don't have anything above here, more likely we're going to transition and, and uh, try to make a play for 62 and a half. Or, you know, they may even, you know, they may not be able to get up there. They'll stall out here. But if, if, um, if things start to stack up around the directional, that can be a tell. If you're getting indicator signals, now, if your tactics are coming in and giving you a sell signal, you've got <clears throat> your risk is defined. So you know, really, the market shouldn't really trade above uh, 43, 49 and a half.
typically this signal is better if the market had traded below the uh, downside pivot. So if the market had gone below the downside pivot and given us this reversal signal, that would be a better exhaustive signal. They they stabilized in what we call a fade. And so that would if they had if they had broken out to the downside already and traded below here, then this would be a definite sell. The fact that they didn't do that is makes it questionable. It's not as it's not as strong. It, it's definitely valid. And if you start to see things play out in the order book that tells you that you're in this theme, uh, then that would be a tell that you could see some uh, follow through to the downside, maybe a play for 23, uh, 19 and a quarter. But the fact that they didn't break out here uh, takes away, you know, this, this strategy is not true yet. You're, um, you know, to have a, uh, we call it a sell DIR critical range breakout, the market has to break out to the downside first. And then that makes this trade more valid. But if the order book's stacking up, you're getting a tactic signal. Um, your risk is defined. You're looking for a play back down to you know 23.34 at least. You know, so that's money. I, I'm typically looking for you know multi-session moves, but um, yeah, it's great that the stock market broke. You know, hopefully now we get you know let's see some volatility. But this is kind of normal. It got overdone to the downside, stabilized, and now we're uh, you know kind of going sideways for a little bit. But I think you know this will be this will provide some good clarity. If the market can't trade above uh, 49 and a half, then um, you know that that would be kind of a tell that you know we might be going lower. And even if we go sideways today, that might be you know over, you know tonight or or tomorrow. We've got Yellen speaking coming up, so that's that's going to keep things a little digestive, I think. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, we'll take one more question here, and we gotta we gotta wrap it up. Uh, let's see. Does the trade have to dip below the DP, um, and then you can short uh, the directional? Yeah, that's so. All of these um, strategies are, you know. You know they're they're self-evident. If you if you took the time and you really broke it down, hey, if I'm in a neutral digestion and sentiment's above the market, and um, what what would be the best things to do? You know, and you can go through these, and they're all logical. You know, yeah, we want to sell it close to sentiment, and we want to buy it. If the, and the reason we're using a reversal here, and not catching a falling knife and fading it, is because sentiment's above the market. So there's a there's a, we're in neutral, but there's a, a a natural negative tone to this neutralness. So we, we'd rather see the market exhaust here a little bit before we step in front of it. And then what do, what else do we know? Well, we know that yesterday, you know, we know the market is moving out of a um, a bull trend situation. We were in a bull trend correction yesterday. We followed through to the downside. You know, that the market got a little overdone to the downside and. You know, so what kind of, you know, do we want to sell it in the hole? No, we probably don't because we know the market's overextended. So what would we rather do? We'd rather sell, you know, pullbacks. And so if we're going to sell a pullback, um, you know, the directional is a good place. And what, you know, it becomes even more valuable when the market goes outside the critical range because if it goes outside the critical range, what's that mean? That means the market broke out to the downside. It's overextended. We're not expecting to follow through, so it, it breaks out, sucks people in, and then you get that that uh, you know dead cat uh, squeeze. And where where should it exhaust? It should exhaust at the midpoint of the critical range. You know, that's just kind of normal. If you're going to have a negative tone from a confirmed breakout, it shouldn't go back through the midway point. And so it you know it it becomes a natural um, place to uh, to sell the market. But we didn't you know we didn't have that exhaustive signal. Um, you know, this is kind of normal breaking action, bear trend, and we break structure of the bear trend here. You know, this tells us we're going sideways. You know, th if this would have been a lower move, lower move low here, that would have been um, a good negative signal. It's not. It's higher. So I'm just, you know, just looking for tells in the market. This the integrity of this support is held. Um, so that's all positive. And where's the real sellers? The real sellers are up here. So it's, you know, it's absolutely a decision point, but it would be a better um, sell if the market had traded, it given us a sell signal, and it hasn't. Hmm. So it's, 
but you're still you're in the middle of a neutral digestive range. It's it's a dangerous trade. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, Justin is asking, how do we, I get notes uh, in my book map? Yeah, so I, you just go to your members area into the um, uh, add-on section, and you can request it there. And you need to be a, a advanced bookmap user. It's included. If you're, it's in. It's included. If you're an advanced bookmap user, it's included, um, and that's the integration. But you need to. Uh, you need to have the desktop um, to get the notes. So for bookmap, you can demo it by going to your uh, members area, and then you need to come to uh, uh, JS Services. Uh, that trade and and sign up for a demo. Okay. Okay, well, I think uh, I think we're out of time here. Uh, it's been about an hour, um, so uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, uh, great, great stuff, John. I mean, on all sorts of fronts, as as usual. Um, you know, just uh, breaking it down from that macro uh, to the structural uh, to the market state. Uh, looking at a strategy, looking at your technicals. Finally, you're looking at your technicals, and then you look to the book. Uh, to optimize and um, uh, that that bigger picture view is just uh, always always uh, uh, great to see because uh, mo most people aren't looking at uh, such a, a a nice macro view like that. Um, no, and, and you and you you know it's important. You know the the way I use the order book is at the moment, and what you don't want to do is let the order book shake you out of a of a good opportunity. And so after the market has produced your event. You know, you really want to, you know, it comes back to, you know, that's your story, you're sticking to it. And you really take a step back and, you know, let the market pay you. You know, don't don't get caught up in, you know, small shifts in the order book when it's outside structure, you know, kind of trading in the middle. It just doesn't matter. You know, you know that's really where the algos live. The algos live in these middle zones. And that's, where they, they play, that's where they play the games. They can't play as many games at structure points. And the bigger the structure points means there's bigger fun participants participation at those levels and the algos can't compete there but they can they can eat you up in the middle for sure and you don't want to get caught up and shaken out of a good opportunity you always want to go back to what's that theme what theme I am is it holding structure it is well then it's holding structure and you know you can use the order book then to help with your position management but you don't you don't want to get too caught up in the, in in the trees you want to take you know view it from above and um, and then that's going to help extend your trade durations. Uh, it's going to, you know, you're going to have the better clarity and when you have that context, you know, underneath, you know, what everything that's going on. You know, it gives you that clarity, and then you're going to see these events happen in a whole different way. You know, and and things that instead of looking at a chart at the end of the day in hindsight and saying, oh, that was obvious, you're going to be able to have those that clarity in real time because you're, you know, like yesterday. You, you came into the session in the S&P with an uh, expectation that this market could correct. And then they exhausted the upside pivot, which is the high point where the rally needed to overcome if it was going to continue that bull trend. And then it breaks structure below the directional. And that told you, that confirmed that this market's in a corrective theme. And then, then, you, then it's just what if? What if the S&P is finally correct? What could it, where could it go? Well, it could go down to the DT too. It, it could happen, and it did, and that's that's really just it's it's just all fact based. It's just you know what if it's going to correct, where can it correct to? What what's the structure of the market tell me? What's you know what are the what are the facts? What's that fact foundation? And that and that gives you real clarity. All right, now good good stuff. I think that's a that's a great note to to end on. Uh, let's see, Jim, I've. Um, uh, and uh, George, I put uh, answered your questions there. Uh, you can reach out to John at jsservices.trade or info at jsservices.com, and they're also in the chat as well for everybody if you want to take a look. Um, other than that, uh, no, uh, really nice presentation, John. Uh, just Thanks, uh, Bruce. just great. Um, slides look slides look really really good too, um, and. Um, uh, yeah, let's, let's wrap it up. Uh, we will um, catch up with everyone uh, tomorrow. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, any questions, feel free to email me and, uh, and come in for a demo of the desktop. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye. Cheers.